The Buddha's creation story. There isn't one. I tried to go through all the websites I could find, but everyone contradicted each other until I found out what everyone had in common in their stories. Buddhists believe the world doesn't have a beginning or an end. The world doesn't have a beginning or an end. The world doesn't have a beginning or an end. The world doesn't have a beginning or an end. The world doesn't have a beginning or an end. The world has been created millions of times and will continue to do so. Everything is a cycle of life, death, rebirth. Life, death, rebirth. Life, death, rebirth. And so on and so forth. Buddha was the one to establish this, but who was the first Buddha? A man named Siddhartha Gautama. He was born in Lumbai in 563 BCE to a wealthy family. He was raised in luxury, but also saw others suffering in poverty. So he sold all his worldly possessions and went out in search of for some spiritual enlightenment, but instead he created a religion. What is the main location of Buddhism? How does the religion affect the location? Location affect religion. How did it start in India and spread to Asia? The founder of Buddhism was Buddha Shakyamuni. He lived and taught in India some two and a half thousand years ago. India was a less wealthy country leading to more poverty and illness. It was a struggle learning how to find happiness through all this. For the first time, he saw poverty, misery, and illness. At home, he soon felt disconnected with his materialistic life and the conditions that surrounded him. In response to the emotions triggered by his experience outside the palace, he gave away all of his belongings and searched for enlightenment through the abandonment of basic needs. The Buddha set out to share his experience and to teach others to follow the middle path. He traveled throughout northeastern India for several decades, spreading his philosophy to anyone who was interested, regardless of gender or caste. Even Brahmins and members of the nobility were converted. Buddhism is mainly located in China, Japan, Korea, and Southeast Asia. Buddhism spread in China for relig religious re reasons. A rival theory holds that Buddhism had joined Hinduism in spreading eastward with trade from India. Buddhism arriving in China from across the inland trade route through Central Asia during the first century. The Royal Han Court, it is said, welcomed Buddhism to China. Buddhist teachings were translated into Chinese. The founder of Buddhism is Siddhartha Gautama. He founded Buddhism more than 2,500 years ago, around 563 BCE. Siddhartha was born into a wealthy family in modern-day Nepal. Siddhartha saw a lot of suffering in the world, and that led him to give up his riches. He wanted to endure poverty. After six years of Siddhartha trying to find where he was at, Siddhartha found spiritual enlightenment meditating under a Bondi tree. He realized this is what he had been looking for the whole time, and he wanted to share that. Siddhartha wanted to share how to get the spiritual state that he had discovered. Siddhartha ended up creating the Four Noble Truths, which include the truth of suffering, the truth of the cause of suffering, the truth of the end of suffering, and the truth of the path that frees us from suffering. After Siddhartha died, a lot more people started to participate in Buddhism, more and more. And now today, there are 470 million followers. Key Beliefs and Values uh, Buddhism always ends up relating back to the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path. What are these, you ask? Well, the Four Noble Truths are 1. All life is suffering. 2. Suffering is desire. 3. Elimination of suffering can only be done with elimination of desire. Number 4. There is a path out of suffering. This path is what you call the Eightfold Path. These both were created by Buddha. When he reached, the, reached enlightenment, he taught others these ways of life. Enlightenment is the end of one's suffering and where one becomes one with themselves in all ways. It is to be awakened. They also believe in meditation and reincarnation. Meditation is the method of understanding and working on our own mind. Reincarnation is the rebirth of the soul in a new body. Uh, they believe their soul never dies. What body you receive in the next life depends on how good your karma is. Buddhism has a lot of karma. This is the relationship between actions and the effects of their actions. Their actions will lead to later consequences. All in all, Buddhists believe in peace, kindness, pure lasting happiness for all beings and benefiting the world with sharing their experiences. Some forms of Buddhism in the United States have in some way been molded into certain American values. They've brought truth, peace, happiness, and compassion to the country. It also affected China. Some effects on Buddhism are the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path. Dukkha is the first noble truth, which is there is suffering. Samyudaya is the second noble truth, which is suffering has an origin. The third noble truth is Neurodaya, which is suffering can cease. Maga is the fourth noble truth which is, there is a path out of suffering. The heart of Buddha's religion is the Eightfold Path. It looks like a giant wheel with eight prongs. 
They practice eight things, which are right view, right resolve, right speech, right conduct, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right consecration, which is meditation. Those are just some of the effects on Buddhism. In modern day, there is an estimate of 535 million Buddhists and 14 Dalai Lamas in the world today. With these many followers and the effects of the Dalai Lama's teachings has affected daily life. But it's not just the Buddhists, but also non-followers. Buddhists have meditation to focus their mind and lead to a path of enlightenment. But even people who don't follow the life as a Buddhist Buddhist meditate to help with stress, anxiety, and depression are some of the reasons why people meditate. Even the life as a Dalai Lama has great effects on the daily life for them and others. After a Dalai Lama dies, another boy is chosen to be the next Dalai Lama around the age of two or three years old.